At a bend in the English Coulee, two miles west of Grand Forks, it all began. On 20 acres of newly donated prairie land, the University of North Dakota would be built. Grand Forks was relatively new. It had been incorporated for less than 10 years, and statehood was six years into the future. To launch this new venture on the desolate prairie was a bold initiative. Frontier boomer and cunning politician George Walsh played an important role. His work to move a bill through the territorial legislature established UND. The first Board of Regents laid the foundation for the university. James Twomley, a Grand Forks merchant. William Collins and Charles Teal, Grand Forks physicians. Robert Evans, a Minto physician. And Ezra Healy, a Grafton clergyman. The Board of Regents chose William Maxwell Blackburn as their first president. A 55-year-old clergyman from Cincinnati, Blackburn taught at a Presbyterian seminary. He was a keen speaker, an accomplished scholar, and moral leader. Blackburn would have his work cut out for him. In the early years, there were few high schools in the region, which meant students were not prepared for college-level work. University facilities were limited, with few books and little equipment. But despite these challenges, the university opened its doors in 1884. Blackburn's tenure would be short-lived. He opposed the Board of Regents' curriculum choice for the school, but his downfall came because of constant battles with faculty member Emma Mott and the university custodian. The Board of Regents terminated the custodian and later terminated both Blackburn and Mott. In October 1885, the board announced that 58-year-old Homer Sprague would take over as president. Under Sprague's leadership, enrollment doubled. By 1889, the university graduated its first class, six women and two men. That same year, North Dakota became a state. While Sprague moved the university forward, it was Webster Merrifield, one of the first faculty members, who would become the next president. Merrifield's presidency would be tested by a new political climate. The development of new universities in Fargo, Mayville, and Valley City meant there was keen competition for students and state appropriations. Then, in the mid-1890s, a severe agricultural depression forced the state to near bankruptcy. Rumors that the university would be closed began circulating in Grand Forks. Merrifield and the Board of Regents held firm. A committee of Grand Forks leaders started a fund drive to keep the university open. Merrifield and the faculty agreed to a salary reduction of 25% to help with the effort. In the end, the institution was saved. On Founders Day, 1930, Merrifield Hall was dedicated. It was the largest building on campus, 300 feet long, four stories high, and the first to be entirely fireproof. Historian Louis Geiger called it the first UND building with concessions to elegance and comforts beyond the bare necessities. Historians would refer to the structure as New Merrifield Hall. It replaced Old Merrifield, which was settling so rapidly, many thought it was in danger of collapse. Old Merrifield was, at one time, the main building on campus, known today as Old Main. The construction of New Merrifield caused the Adelphi Fountain to be moved. The proximity of the fountain to the new building was not considered aesthetically pleasing. It was relocated to a bend in the English Coulee where it remains today. While the 20th century brought growth, it also brought the Great Depression. In 1933, when President Franklin Roosevelt took office, 15 million Americans were unemployed. The federal government created FERA, the Federal Emergency Relief Administration. The program employed millions of Americans who built and developed public projects. These workers did landscaping along the English Coulee. Workers also helped construct Camp Depression, 
10 discarded cabooses set up as dormitories. During the Depression, the university was constantly being scrutinized by economizers. Eventually, budgets were cut, 17 faculty positions were lost, and morale plummeted. Time would heal scars of the Depression, but first, the university would face yet another challenge. World War II was long and brutal. A defining event of the 20th century, it would transform the university into something that resembled a military training base. Government training programs opened on campus and provided much needed support for the war effort. They also provided UND with a critical revenue source. In the early 1940s, nearly all of the faculty provided training to military personnel. They trained nurses, engineers, medics, glider pilots, and radio operators. By the end of the war, UND's enrollment grew considerably. For the first time in more than a decade, there was a feeling of optimism and pride. The university would again come to life with experimentation and a sense of adventure. In 1950, Thomas J. Clifford was appointed as Dean of the School of Commerce. At 29, he was the youngest dean in the university's history. Born in rural North Dakota, a World War II veteran and graduate of UND, Clifford possessed skills that would elevate him to the presidency. In 1971, he became the university's eighth president. Under his leadership, new programs reflected the changing state of American education. Uh, the emergence of programs like uh, Center for Aerospace Science, Energy, and Medicine. The four-year school of medicines had an enormous impact on this institution. Clifford's legacy would become his ability to transform the university into a multi-million dollar enterprise. By his second decade as president, the university grew from nearly 8,400 students to more than 11,000. In 1992, Kendall Baker would become the university's ninth president. Like his predecessors, Baker would face budget cuts, restructuring, and protests about issues of the day. But unlike other presidents, Baker would face an adversity so insurmountable it would close the university. In 1997, after a winter of record snowfall, the Red River reached a crest of 54 feet, 26 feet above flood stage. 78 buildings and the campus underground infrastructure were affected. It would take nearly $59 million to repair the damage. Enrollment plummeted after the flood, and UND would once again restructure itself to rebuild the university. In 1999, on the threshold of a new millennium, the university inaugurated its next president. And what an extraordinary opportunity you've given me to be entrusted to lead the University of North Dakota. Charles Kupchella would inherit a restructured university, reduced enrollment from the flood, and a declining regional high school population forced the university to find new ways to attract students. Strategic planning became the buzzword during the Coachella administration. Marketing efforts were increased, research activity nearly tripled, and wellness became part of the institution's culture. Similar to the Clifford era, new buildings sprung up on campus to better support the university's mission. By the time Kupchella retired in 2008, the student population increased by almost 2,000. The 21st century brought another milestone to the University of North Dakota, its 125th anniversary. 
Years of planning culminated in events and activities designed around its theme from tradition to tomorrow. During the anniversary, the university inaugurated its 11th president, Robert Kelly. I invite all of you to engage with me in the exciting experiment that is the University of North Dakota. We will engage the future together. Join with me in moving UND from being a great university to an exceptional one. While the University of North Dakota has changed during its lifetime, some things remain constant. UND graduates high achieving professionals, leaders, and scholars. Faculty, staff, and administrators continue to build on the institution's foundation. When you look at the work ethic, when you look at the value systems, when you look at what people bring to this institution, this is where I think the exceptional quality of North Dakota is embedded in this university. Today, we honor the students of this year's graduating class. We celebrate your success, and we thank you for bringing your spirit to the University of North Dakota.